Visudhimaga by Badantakariya Buddhagosa Translated from the Pali by Bhikkhuneo Amala Part 2 Concentration, Samadhi Chapter 11 Concentration, Conclusion, Nutriment and the Elements Samadhi Nadiza, Perception of Repulsiveness in Nutriment 1.341 Now comes the description of the development of the perception of repulsiveness in nutriment, which was listed as the one perception one next to the immaterial states, 3.105. Herein, it nourishes, aharati, lit. Brings on, thus it is nutriment, ahara, lit. Bringing on. That is of four kinds as, physical nutriment, nutriment consisting of contact, Nutriment consisting of mental volition, and nutriment consisting of consciousness. 2. But what is it here that nourishes, brings on, what? Physical nutriment, Kabaliokarahara, nourishes, brings on, the materiality of the octad that has nutritive essence as 8. 3. Contact as nutriment nourishes, brings on, the three kinds of feeling, mental volition as nutriment nourishes, brings on, Rebirth linking in the three kinds of becoming, consciousness as nutriment nourishes, brings on, mentality materiality at the moment of rebirth linking. 3. Now, when there is physical nutriment there is attachment, which brings peril, when there is nutriment as contact there is approaching, which brings peril, when there is nutriment as mental volition there is rebirth linking, which brings peril. Point 4. And to show how they bring fear thus, Physical nutriment should be illustrated by the simile of the child's flesh, S298, contact as nutriment by the simile of the hideless cow, S299, mental volition as nutriment by the simile of the pit of live coals, S299, and consciousness as nutriment by the simile of the hundred spears, S2100. For but of these four kinds of nutriment it is only physical nutriment, classed as what is eaten drunk, chewed, and tasted, that is intended here as nutriment in this sense. The perception arisen as the apprehension of the repulsive aspect in that nutriment is, perception of repulsiveness in nutriment. 5. One who wants to develop that perception of repulsiveness in nutriment should learn the meditation subject and see that he has no uncertainty about even a single word of what he has learned. Then he should go into solitary retreat and 342 review repulsiveness in 10 aspects in the physical nutriment classified as what is eaten, drunk, chewed, and tasted, that is to say, as to going, seeking, using, secretion, receptacle, what is uncooked, undigested, what is cooked, digested, fruit, outflow, and smearing. 6. 1. Herein, as to going, even when a man has gone forth in so mighty a dispensation, still after he has perhaps spent all night reciting the enlightened one's word or doing the ascetic s work, after he has risen early to do the duties connected with the shrine terrace and the enlightenment tree terrace, to set out the water for drinking and washing, to sweep the grounds and to see to the needs of the body, after he has sat down on his seat and given attention to his meditation subject twenty or thirty times five and got up again, then he must take his bowl and outer robe, he must leave behind the ascetics woods that are not crowded with people, offer the bliss of seclusion, possess shade and water, and are clean, cool, delightful places, he must disregard the noble. One's delight in seclusion, and he must set out for the village in order to get nutriment, as a jackal for the charnel ground. 7. And as he goes thus, from the time when he steps down from his bed or chair he has to tread on a carpet six covered with the dust of his feet, geckos droppings, and so on. Next he has to see the doorstep seven which is more repulsive than the inside of the room since it is often fouled with the droppings of rats, bats eight and so on. Next the lower terrace, which is more repulsive than the terrace above since it is all smeared with the droppings of owls, pigeons nine and so on. Next the grounds ten which are more repulsive than the lower floor since they are defiled by old grass and leaves blown about by the wind, by sick novices urine, excrement, spittle, and snot, and in the rainy season by water, mud, and so on. 
and he has to see the road to the monastery, which is more repulsive than the grounds. 8. In due course, after standing in the debating lodge 11 when he has finished paying homage at the enlightenment tree and the shrine, he sets out thinking, instead of looking at the shrine that is like a cluster of pearls, and the enlightenment tree that is as lovely as a bouquet of peacock's tail feathers, and the abode that is as fair as a god's palace, I must now turn my back on such a charming place and go abroad for the sake of food, and on the way to the village, the view of a road of stumps and thorns and an uneven road broken up by the force of water awaits him. 9. Next, after he has put on his waist cloth as one who hides an abscess, and tied his waistband as one who ties a bandage on a wound, and robed himself in his upper robes as one who hides a skeleton, and taken out his bowl as one who takes out a pen for medicine, 343 when he reaches the vicinity of the village gate, perhaps the site of an elephant's carcass, a horse's carcass, a buffalo's carcass, a human carcass, a snake's carcass, or a dog's carcass awaits him, and not only that, but he has to suffer his nose to be assailed by the smell of them. Next, as he stands in the village gateway, he must scan the village streets in order to avoid danger from savage elephants, horses, and so on. 10. So this repulsive experience beginning with the carpet that has to be trodden on and ending with the various kinds of carcasses that have to be seen and smelled, has to be undergone for the sake of nutriment, oh, nutriment is indeed a repulsive thing. This is how repulsiveness should be reviewed as to going. 11. Two. How as to seeking? When he has endured the repulsiveness of going in this way, and has gone into the village, and is clothed in his cloak of patches, he has to wander in the village streets from house to house like a beggar with a dish in his hand. And in the rainy season wherever he treads his feet sink into water and mire up to the flesh of the calves.12 he has to hold the bowl in one hand and his robe up with the other. In the hot season he has to go about with his body covered with the dirt, grass, and dust blown about by the wind. On reaching such and such a house door he has to see and even to tread in gutters and cesspools covered with blue bottles and seething with all the species of worms, all mixed. Up with fish washings, meat washings, rice washings, spittle, snot, dogs and pigs excrement, and what not from which flies come up and settle on his outer cloak of patches and on his bowl and on his head. 12. And when he enters a house, some give and some do not. And when they give, some give yesterday's cooked rice and stale cakes and rancid jelly, sauce, and so on. Point 13. Some, not giving, say, please pass on, venerable sir, others keep silent as if they did not see him. Some avert their faces. Others treat him with harsh words such as, Go away, you bald head. When he has wandered for alms in the village in this way like a beggar, he has to depart from it. 13. So this experience beginning with the entry into the village and ending with the departure from it, which is repulsive owing to the water, mud, etc., that has to be trodden in and seen and endured, has to be undergone for the sake of nutriment, oh, nutriment is indeed a repulsive thing. This is how repulsiveness should be reviewed as to seeking. 344. 14. 3. How as to using? After he has sought the nutriment in this way and is sitting at ease in a comfortable place outside the village, then so long as he has not dipped his hand into it he would be able to invite a respected bhikkhu or a decent person, if he saw one, to share it, but as soon as he has dipped his hand into it out of desire to eat he would be ashamed to say, take some. And when he has dipped his hand in and is squeezing it up, the sweat trickling down his five fingers wets. Any dry crisp food there may be and makes it sodden. 15 And when its good appearance has been spoiled by his squeezing it up, and it has been made into a ball and put into his mouth, then the lower teeth function as a mortar, the upper teeth as a pestle, and the tongue as a hand. It gets pounded there with the pestle of the teeth like a dog's dinner in a dog's trough, while he turns it over and over with his tongue, then the thin spittle at the tip of the tongue smears it, and the thick spittle behind the middle of the tongue smears it, and the filth from the teeth in the parts where a tooth stick cannot reach smears it. 16. When thus mashed up and besmeared, 
this peculiar compound now destitute of the original color and smell is reduced to a condition as utterly nauseating as a dog's vomit in a dog's trough. Yet, notwithstanding that it is like this, it can still be swallowed because it is no longer in range of the eye's focus. This is how repulsiveness should be reviewed as to using. 17.4. How as to secretion? Buddhas and Paxkabuddhas and wheel-turning monarchs have only one of the four secretions consisting of bile, phlegm, pus, and blood, but those with weak merit have all four. So when the food has arrived at the stage of being eaten and it enters inside, then in one whose secretion of bile is in excess it becomes as utterly nauseating as if smeared with thick mat yucca oil, in one whose secretion of phlegm in excess it is as if smeared with the juice of nagavala leaves, 14 in one whose secretion of pus is in excess it is as if smeared with rancid buttermilk, and in one whose secretion of blood is in excess it is as utterly nauseating as if smeared with dye. This is how repulsiveness should be reviewed as to secretion. 18.5. How as to receptacle? When it has gone inside the belly and is smeared with one of these secretions, then the receptacle it goes into is no gold dish or crystal or silver dish and so on. On the contrary, if it is swallowed by one ten years old, it finds itself in a place like a cesspit unwashed for ten years. 345 If it is swallowed by one twenty years old, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 90 years old, if it is swallowed by one a hundred years old, it finds itself in a place like a cesspit unwashed for a hundred years. This is how repulsiveness should be reviewed as to receptacle. 19.6. How as to what is uncooked, undigested? After this nutriment has arrived at such a place for its receptacle, then for as long as it remains uncooked it stays in that same place just described, which is shrouded in absolute darkness, pervaded by drafts 15 tainted by various smells of ordure and utterly fetid and loathsome. And just as when a cloud out of season has rained during a drought and bits of grass and leaves and rushes and the carcasses of snakes, dogs, and human beings that have collected in a pit at the gate of an outcast village remain there warmed by the sun's heat until the pit becomes covered with froth and bubbles, so too, what has been swallowed that day and yesterday and the day before remains there together, and being smothered by the layer of phlegm and covered with froth and bubbles produced by digestion through being fermented by the heat of the bodily fires, it becomes quite loathsome. This is how repulsiveness should be reviewed as to what is uncooked. 27. How as to what is cooked? When it has been completely cooked there by the bodily fires, it does not turn into gold, silver, etc., as the ore 16 of gold, silver, etc., do through smelting. Instead, giving off froth and bubbles, it turns into excrement and fills the receptacle for digested food, like brown clay squeezed with a smoothing trowel and packed into a tube, and it turns into urine and fills the bladder. This is how repulsiveness should be reviewed as to what is cooked. 21a. How as to fruit? When it has been rightly cooked, it produces the various kinds of ordure consisting of head hairs, body hairs, nails, teeth, and the rest. When wrongly cooked it produces the hundred diseases beginning with itch, ringworm, smallpox, leprosy, plague, consumption, coughs, flux, and so on. Such is its fruit. This is how repulsiveness should be reviewed as to fruit. 22.9. How as to outflow? On being swallowed, it enters by one door, after which it flows out by several doors in the way beginning, eye dirt from the eye, ear dirt from the ear, SN 197. And on being swallowed it is swallowed even in the company of large gatherings. But on flowing out, now converted into excrement, urine, etc., it is excreted only in solitude. 346 On the first day one is delighted to eat it, elated and full of happiness and joy. On the second day one stops one's nose to void it, with a wry face, disgusted and dismayed. And on the first day one swallows it. Lustfully, greedily, gluttonously, infatuatedly. But on the second day, 
After a single night has passed, one excretes it with distaste, ashamed, humiliated and disgusted. Hence the ancients said. 23 The food and drink so greatly prized, the crisp to chew, the soft to suck, go in all by a single door. But by nine doors come oozing out. The food and drink so greatly prized, the crisp to chew, the soft to suck, men like to eat in company. But to excrete in secrecy. The food and drink so greatly prized, the crisp to chew, the soft to suck, these a man eats with high delight, and then excretes with dumb disgust. The food and drink so greatly prized, the crisp to chew, the soft to suck. A single night will be enough to bring them to putridity. This is how repulsiveness should be reviewed as to outflow.